So as uh, we managed to sit down with Guaning last week, uh, about an hour, he always gave me this impression that he's an accountant, he's not really a politician. So how, how, does, he, how does he talk? How do you feel him as a, you know, as a, as a politician? Well, I think um, he came across to me as somebody who's quite uh, genuine and quite uh, you know, transparent about how he feels about the whole situation of the country, you know, the whole debt issue we are, uh, we are actually facing and, what, um, the, the, and all the things that he has to do next. Um, in the next couple of years and um, if you ask many people I think they will tell you that there's a big difference in how he conducted his first press conference and mm. how he is now you know two weeks after being the finance minister so mm. I think he's trying his best and uh, he's really easing into this role as a finance minister now so we actually went to this press conference last week we, we, we were actually yeah. there and when he announced that uh, during that time 7 million ringgit was collected as at 3 p.m. On, on a Thursday. Yeah. But on Friday, just now I checked again, it's 18.6 million ringgit. Yeah. So what, what did he talk about, you know, this Kickstarter for, for the country? Oh, okay, on uh, the Tabong Harapan. Yeah. Right, uh, I, I think one important point that he brought out is that the Tabung Harapan will not settle the one trillion debt mm. uh, that, that the country has. So basically, this Tabung Harapan is a, is a way for every Malaysian, whether you give one ringgit or one million ringgit, to show that we are all in this together. We want the best for Malaysia and we are all Malaysians working together to try to make the country a better place. But he emphasised that it will definitely not settle our one tree in that right, issue. Correct. It's actually yeah. a way to show patriotism. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. To, to express your love okay. for the nation. Yeah. And, um, how you are so proud to be Malaysian again. Yeah. Mm. So with all these measures that he laid out, right? Uh, you know, um, GST, uh, no more GST, 3 billion petrol subsidy. Um, we, we actually speak to some, you know, some of these analysts and economists. Mm. What do they say about, you know, hitting, achieving the target of um, fiscal deficit this year? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think we have to remember that it's not just uh, giving out subsidies and uh, zero rising the GST, but also they are also making effort to reduce the OPEX mm. like you know, they outlined to us that there'll be 10 billion saved from uh, the uh, rationalization exercise. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's a quite an important point to remember. Mm. And um, when it comes to what they think, what economists think about the 2.8 deficit and whether we can achieve it this year, I think because the government has already outlined, they already show you um, item by item where they are going to uh, extract the money from or, you know, de deduct expenses. So they are quite. They sound quite confident that yeah, they're might, quite optimistic. Yeah, 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 yeah. That we might actually meet the the uh, deficit of two point eight mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. So, so with you know a lot of um, spending, especially public spending cut, right? Uh, so we are relying a lot on private spending this year. Yeah. Where else can we see the growth from? Uh, okay, um, this is also another component uh, called the the exports, the net exports. So that is the one component which economists think that apart from private consumption that could help to support the economy this year. Because mm. as we know last year exports uh, grew quite an exponential pace, at quite an exponential pace. Although this year we won't yeah. see such great a growth but it will still be um, sufficient somewhat mm. to support the economy. So GST has been zero rise uh, from this month onward. You know, over the weekend, I actually saved about 11.64. I remember the figure very correctly, very accurately. So if that's the case, where are the potential areas the government, you know, can get money from? More revenue from? Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's not from people like you and I. But uh, I, I think what has been uh, going around last year was that um, the, the previous government, at least, um, there were actually some talks, maybe not from the previous government, but it was going around, you know, people saying that, one possible avenue of taxes would be the inheritance tax. Mm. So it's, a, it's basically taxing the rich, those with um, lots of things that they leave behind for their, for their um, heirs and, and next generation. So that's one, one way which if the government really wanted to, they could um, you know, explore. Mm. And another one is the um, digital economy. Mm. Taxing the digital mm. digital economy, which we have um, probably heard a lot since uh, somewhere last year too, mm. as well. So, as a, when newspaper came out right after GE, we saw this huge amount of money, one trillion ringgit of debt, right? Actually, what does it mean for people like you and me? Um, well, during the interview with uh, our finance minister, I think one one important thing that kind of stood out uh, during the interview was that he mentioned that this uh, one trillion debt will be 
paid by our you know every generation to come the next yeah. few generations will be paying for for this debt so it is his um, burden i guess and his uh, job to make sure that we don't pass on this debt to our next generation for more on the stories pick up a copy of the edge weekly at all good newsstands